Time for a reality check. It doesn't matter how well you design your QSYS audio system if the user can't figure out how to operate it. For most end users, their only interaction with QSYS is going to be in the form of the user control interface that you design for them. Now, whether that's on a QSC touchscreen, an iPad or an iPhone, or a PC viewer, this UCI is their only access to the audio system. As far as they're concerned, that UCI is QSYS. If you design a clunky UCI that's hard to navigate, then they think that QSYS sucks. And it doesn't! We here at QSC are relying on your UCIs to represent QSYS to the world. So whether you like it or not, you have to consider the user's experience when you're designing their interface. In this video series, we're going to discuss some basic design principles that contribute to a positive user experience. For some people, this may be second nature. For others, you may learn some things you've never considered before. While we'll be focusing on building UCIs with the QSYS Designer software, the design concepts we'll cover here are universal, and you may start to notice these principles whenever you interact with a new website or software or app. This is a crash course in design philosophy. Let's start big. You don't have to be an artist to design a good UCI. Yes, a skilled graphic designer can add a lot to the visual appearance of a UCI, but we're not trying to turn you into a graphic designer right now. This video is about making a comfortable, intuitive, and functional UCI, and you don't need any Photoshop skills for that. At the highest level, just keep this one thing in mind. Design is intention. So what does that mean? Well, imagine that you're working on your computer at your desk, and you have a coaster for your coffee mug. Where does that coaster go? If you're right-handed, you probably instinctively placed it to the right of your keyboard, with your intention to make it as easy and natural to use as possible. You designed it there, based on where you naturally want it to be. You probably didn't put it inside the drawer because only an insane person would keep their coffee there. Building a UCI is similar. You just probably have to spend a little bit more time figuring out exactly where the user instinctively wants to find everything. So, what's the first step? Figuring out who that user is. Do a little research into who is actually going to be using your UCI. Is this a maintenance UCI for the venue's engineer? Is it a public UCI that anyone can interact with? The interface you build for something, even as simple as an audio player, might be very different depending on who has access to it. If you're able to, it would be worth your time to talk to the actual people involved. The more people you talk to, the more you'll get a good sense of what they need from the UCI. You should also consider how many UCIs and touchscreens are required in the venue. If multiple people need to access the same device, you have to consider whether you should build a single UCI specific to that device that services all of their needs, or whether it might be better to build separate UCIs that they can log into individually from any device. In QSYS, you can change a touchscreen's properties to allow dynamic UCI assignment, which allows a user to choose between different UCIs. Knowing which method to choose will probably become more obvious once you complete the next step of design, planning. You may want to start by drawing a flowchart to guide you through all of the possible functions of the system. This is called the taxonomy of the system a chart that will help you to group related concepts together under logical categories. Taxonomy is a term you may recognize from taxonomy charts of plants and animals that separate them into kingdoms, genuses, phylums, all that other stuff from school you've forgotten about. Structure out your UCI the same way before you start building it. How many different pages or layers do you need for each task? And what makes sense for your venue? Like everything in design, there's no right answer here. Maybe you want a main page that lets the user navigate to each of the rooms in the venue, and from there you can choose between audio control or lighting control within that room. Or maybe it makes more sense to choose between audio or lighting first, and then select a room. It will all depend on the different tasks you want to make available, and it's worth the time to organize them in a way that lets the user accomplish each task as easily as possible. Within QSYS, you can build as many different pages on each UCI as you like. And don't forget that there are a variety of ways you can navigate from page to page. 
Simple UCIs may take advantage of the page tabs to select different pages. Page tabs can be placed on any edge of your UCI to provide simple menu navigation. Or you could disable these tabs and let the user simply swipe from page to page. But more advanced UCIs might have a more complicated menu structure. So you probably want to disable the swipe option and instead use the navigation buttons to direct your user from page to page. Navigation buttons can send the user to one particular page, which lets you guide their movement more specifically. And don't forget that you can also use pop-up buttons to hide away certain controls. Just add a pop-up button from the layout components and add any number of controls inside its pop-up window. You can resize that window and move it around and then close it to keep those controls hidden. Or if you're interested in diving into a little bit of coding, you can script different layers to transition on and off screen as well. But whether you're using pages, pop-ups, or layers, they're all a part of the taxonomy of your system, which is why a flowchart can help you plan out your UCI before you build it. A big thing to consider during the planning process involves choice. What choices do you want to give the user? I mean, choice is a good thing, right? Well, of course it is, but it can also be a bad thing. A design that doesn't provide enough choices can seem too simplistic or even condescending. But too much choice can be a huge problem as well. If it takes the user a long time to find the thing they're looking for, or they're never certain which button to press, then the system appears to be too complicated and difficult to work with. So if you feel the need to overcomplicate your UCIs, just blast that idea out of your head right now. Providing a user with fewer choices will increase the speed with which they can navigate the system and reduce the number of errors they make along the way. Let's look at that audio player again, for instance. You may be tempted to drag all these controls onto a UCI so that the user can do whatever they like, and in some cases, that may be fine. But if this audio player is just playing background music in the lobby of a hotel, for instance, does the receptionist really need the ability to fast forward or rewind the song? What about this autoplay button? This button tells the audio player to automatically start whenever the design is pushed to Acuse's core. Does the lobby receptionist know that? No. This button will probably just confuse them and you never want the user to be confused when they're operating your system. You want to provide just enough choices so they can accomplish their tasks, but not enough choices that they can get themselves into trouble. So to recap, research and planning let you identify the main tasks that your UCI should facilitate and give you a ground plan on how you want to organize the UCI's page structure. Determining which choices your user can make plays a big role in the UCI's complexity. Once you're comfortable with knowing what you want your UCI to do, then it's time to start building it. In the next video, we'll take a look at some common design philosophies to keep in mind when you start building your UCI.